My screen says it is now live. Mine does not. Mine does. All right. I guess we're live. Technology is our friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you all for joining us this evening on uh, Wednesday. I am so happy to have uh, Cherie Gabbert with us, who's living with metastatic breast cancer in Southern Oregon in Grants Pass, and my colleague and friend uh, Cindy Fletcher our director of programs here at Komen. Tonight's topic is treatment access during the coronavirus pandemic, which is so important right now as individuals who are, are, are scared to leave their homes, they have uh, possibly lost their jobs. They are already facing hardships with the uh, cost of healthcare um, and possibly being underinsured or un uninsured who need to take care of their health while taking care of their families and making difficult choices. So I am so happy to, to begin with um, uh, having a introduction to Cindy to talk about uh, the treatment access program. And first tell our, our viewers who are with us um, what this program is in generality. So in generality, thanks Andy, uh, this program is a way to help people get to treatment. So we provide, uh, gift cards for gas, lodging, food for people typ typically who have to travel at least 25 miles one way to breast cancer treatment who are in financial need. So they're at 250% of the federal poverty level, which is about $3,600 a month for a couple, uh, a family of two. Uh, and so we uh, fund the program and we work with 2-in-1 Info that administers and mails out the gift cards. And uh, the patients apply through their cancer centers. Thank you. It, 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 it is something that Cindy and I know is so important as we traveled around the state. I think we've traveled probably 10,000 miles in the last few years, visiting every county in Oregon and Southwest Washington, meeting with um, patient navigators, uh, healthcare workers who are working on the front lines to understand how important this project program is. And through those relationships, we've been able to help uh, individuals like Cherie. So Cherie, um, I guess two questions combined together. Um, how did you first hear about this program? And um, when did you first use this treatment access program? For me, I've had kind of a long uh, journey with breast cancer. I was originally diagnosed in 97. And in Southern Oregon, there were no resources. At that time, I went to OHSU for treatment and I was not aware of any assistance available anywhere. Then when I had my recurrence in uh, 2014, it was through a patient navigator that gave me a list of uh, resources to help me get through that journey. And uh, it was Coleman's treatment access program that responded first and provided the first financial assistance, which began my relationship with Komen. Um, it made all the difference in the world for us having to drive 250 miles each way to get to treatment. First time around, I'd get up at three in the morning and drive up for treatment and drive back at the end of the day. So it's nice this way we could go, I could get treatment and it covered meals, gas, whatever my needs were to get to and from. So that was 2014 to 2015. How often do you utilize the program now? Now it's once a year. I just met my five year mark. Woot woot. So it's an annual visit up to OHSU. So I use it once a year now. Originally at first diagnosis, I was coming up every two and three weeks. And then, then of course it's quarterly for your first couple of years. And then it slows down as you have more and more, you know, good news as you journey through it. Which we're so happy to hear. You were a keynote speaker three years ago, I believe. Yeah, I think it was. And it yeah. inspired so many on your journey. Uh, can, you, can you tell our viewers who are listening and 
perhaps patients that have not accessed the treatment access program. Uh, how does it work from your end? Uh, when you apply, how do you receive the funding or the, the cards or in, in what time frame? Right. When I first applied in 2014, the, car, the cards were waiting for me when I got back from surgery. So at that point, those gift cards came in handy for my next trip up for treatment. So they came in the mail, they came within days of processing the application. What I found was such a wonderful aspect of treatment access program using gift cards is I could use it to pay the power bill if I needed to, you know, or I could use it certainly for going to Portland for my needs, but it didn't, it also, there was a time I used it for groceries for my family because that's where we were at. That was the squeakiest wheel that we needed to feed everybody. So, you know, having the flexibility with the gift cards made it tremendously uh, easy to use, whether it was lodging, food, gas, or like I said, just the everyday things to keep our household going. So I know uh, Cindy, Cindy may talk about this later, but um, we, we've, been, we've been looking at how this, this need has grown over this, across the state. And it's not, it's not a Portland program, it's statewide, it's, it's a Southwest Washington program. Um, are you running into other patients that you're meeting that are, 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 don't know about this program or are you, or, or, or not? Yeah, I have been able to give information to a lot of people around me because in Southern Oregon, things are getting better as far as oncology treatments go, but there are some things like when I had my recurrence, there was not the type of radiation that I could have down here. So that meant six weeks up in Portland where they could provide that specialized treatment. So yeah, there's, and I met a number of people that were in that same situation where they might be able to get some of their services here now, but not all of their specialty services. So to, to make that big long trip, I talked to a gal that lives 45 miles west of me. She was driving 60 miles every day to get to her radiation treatment in Medford. Well, when you rack up what six weeks of driving 60 miles every day, that's a hardship. Whereas if she had been able to have access to the treatment access program, there would be assistance for her to be able to stay in Portland and have her treatment and not have that exhausting travel as well as the expense of going back and forth. Yeah, but you've, you've told us about your journey and how you've driven nonstop to Portland and then stopped on certain rest areas of sleep and a sushi place you would stop to eat, which I can't even imagine if, if, if one was even healthy, but to go through the treatment that you're going through is just remarkable. And it, 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 it reinforced in us how important this program is to serve patients, uh, breast cancer patients in this case, um, breaks our heart that, that this is something that one has to deal with, that's deal with. Cindy and I travel when the weather is good around the state. We go, to, we go to Eastern Oregon and Southeastern Oregon, Pioneer counties, because it's sunny out and it's August. <laughs> Maybe there's forest fires, but in the dead of winter, when you're driving from Lakeview to Klamath Falls or Medford or from Burns to right, Bend right. Um, or Coos Bay to Medford yeah. or Hood River to Portland, it, it's, it's, a, it's a heartbreaking thing to think that that's a journey that you may or may not be able to make, and that could be life-saving treatment. So you're, you're, I, I so appreciate you being with us tonight to talk about what you had to deal with, what you're dealing with, and, and how the treatment access program is helping on some level, because we know how important, we need, how important it is we need to continue this program despite the pandemic. Um, and these are hard times for everybody. It affects us all. It affects Komen. Uh, which is why your message is so important. I want to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to share about your experiences with the treatment access program and, and, and the continuity of treatment and care that you've experienced as, as we've evolved this program? Because you're, I know you're so eloquent and <laughs> <laughs> and you're a friend. And I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a friend. Yes, we are friends now, yes. Uh, I'll tell you, the treatment access program, I think... There was a line in the speech in my talk that I did in Portland that says there I came became aware of more resources available, but the beauty of the TAP program
program is that it meets the need where the rubber meets the road. I mean, where you have to pay to put gas in the car, to make sure your tires are good, to make the trip wherever it is you have to go, and to not be locked into, and not that I'm diminishing any other services I receive for lodging, but the beauty of the treatment access program is it gives me the discretion to use those funds at a crisis time to do what's most important. For me, like I said, sometimes it was the lodging and trips up. Uh, one time it was buying groceries for the family or paying part of a power bill. You know, life is real for all of us. And so cancer doesn't show sympathy when you're out of work when you lose your health insurance, even when things seemingly are perfect, it rocks a person's world. There are things you just can't even imagine that become a hardship. And to have cash asset, access to cash through those gift cards just made that flexibility a beautiful thing for us. And it, it helped us to prioritize our finances. It literally kept us in our home during a really frightening financial crunch because I was out of work for a year. You know, it's, it's really a crisis upon a crisis with the pandemic happening. Oh, I can't even with, imagine. Oh yeah, and it, it, it um, you know, when, when, this, when this unfolded in March, I guess, when we all closed down, certainly here in Oregon, um, we started to look critically at what we can and can't do because We've been affected too. We we can't do everything now, so we honed in on on how do we help people in crisis, in care. And so Cindy, um, I'm going to turn to now. And by the way, uh, if you just if you tuned in late, I'm talking to Sheree Yabert, who's a metastatic breast cancer um, fighter in Grants Pass, Oregon, um, who's part of our treatment access program and, and a wonderful dear friend of ours uh, and supporter um, as we support her and Cindy Fletcher our program director, who's just awesome. Yeah. Um, I know many of our listeners are listening in, including Tony Mountain, with many many of you who know. Oh, yes. We, we created the Tony Mountain Fund, thanks to Tony, um, and her tireless advocacy for patient for patient assistance across the state. Mm -hmm. we, we, we stand in her, we, 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 we stand on her shoulders and Gail, um, who worked with her. So, I, uh, I want to turn to I want to turn to Cindy. Um, obviously, we we took a look at this program when the pandemic started. So, Cindy, what what has changed about the program since since the COVID nineteen outbreak? So yeah, I mean exactly what Sherry was saying. You know, right now people, well, just in general, people are having to make some tough choices between treatment and groceries, treatment and utilities. How do they get around? And as the pandemic hit and as we started hearing about you know restaurants closing uh, businesses closing we had to you know we were all working from home we started having this conversation uh how can we be the most effective how can we help people uh in the community and so uh we sent out a survey to patient navigators around the patient navigators and social workers uh, around our service area of Oregon and Southwest Washington to those living with metastatic breast cancer. We posted on our Facebook page to, to uh, gather information from people in treatment for breast cancer, really asking how do we help people who are in treatment for breast cancer right now? This is where we wanna focus our, focus our attention. And uh, we overwhelmingly heard from the community that uh, the 25 mile one one way to treatment or 50 mile round trip to treatment requirement was prohibitive that there were people that were in our communities in communities closer to the um, various breast centers around the um, service area that needed assistance as well and so we uh, took away that requirement and so currently uh, the requirements to or the eligibility guidelines, I should say, for the program are that you're in treatment for breast cancer, you live or receive treatment in Oregon and Southwest Washington, and you uh, your income is at or below 250% of the federal poverty level. And like I mentioned, that's about $3,600 a month for a couple. And so right now, 
uh, we also added a, a little bit of an extra incentive for folks or a, a additional funding for folks who um, may need it. So if you uh, travel less than 25 miles one way to treatment, you can receive $100. Uh, and that can be, again, it's a Visa gift card, as Shuri was saying, it can be used on anything. So we're expecting that, yes, people need to pay for, for gas. Uh, but they may also need it to go get groceries, to pay utility bill, to help with rent, mortgage, whatever it might be. Uh, and if you travel uh, at least 25, 25 miles or more one way to treatment, then you're eligible for this extra $100 in addition to what you normally would qualify for. Uh, and uh, people can receive up to $400 in disbursement. So somebody coming from Grants Pass, somebody coming from a uh, burn, somebody coming from um, Eastern Oregon, uh, I, I know Burns is in Eastern Oregon, somebody coming from Ontario uh, would uh, qualify for $400. Uh, and uh, then you can receive, a, a patient can receive up to $800 in a year. So really trying to give people just that extra something that helps to keep them in treatment and helps to keep them safe and their families safe. Thank you. Uh, but before I ask Cindy another question, uh, we definitely welcome questions. So if you if you insert those now on um, on the on the Facebook page, um, Alice Fern, who is behind the scenes coordinating this, uh, <laughs> will definitely ask those questions of Cindy and or um, Cherie. So please do post those. We welcome those when I when I finish the conversation with Cindy. But Cindy, how has the program um, changed now since in terms of usage? Uh, since the uh, pandemic over the last month or so? So as you can imagine, usage has increased. Uh, people are in need. Uh, and so we've been watching it very closely. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're helping folks. Patient, we've gotten great response both from patients and patient navigators and social workers about um, being able to help more people. Uh, I just checked uh, I just checked what the number of cards that 211 Info has sent out. And in the last six weeks, so we typically average about $6,200, $6,500 a month um, in gift cards out. And so I would expect that at, in six, with six weeks, um, six weeks, six weeks in from April 1st, I would expect that we would probably be about uh, $9,000 or something. Uh, and we have spent uh, almost $15,000 on this program. And so we're seeing almost a, a huge increase um, in the number of people using it. Uh, we've had uh, almost 40 people have taken advantage of that they live under 25 miles to um, from their treatment center. Uh, and about uh, 20 have utilized uh, that extra $100. So we're looking at about 70% of the people who are utilizing the program are taking advantage of the expansion. Uh, which is fantastic. Um, and it's something that uh, we're glad to see. Thank you. It's it's remarkable to see that growth, but not surprising uh, given those circumstances we're under. So just to, to walk us through this, just so people that are listening, if, if they're not accessing the program or they know someone who might be in need, um, how does someone in breast cancer treatment receive treatment access program funding? How do they go about that? Uh, they ask their social worker or navigator and that person can direct them. And if their social worker or navigator has not heard of the program, they can go to our website, comanoregon.org. And under our programs, the treatment access program is listed and the application is on our, on our website along with instructions. Uh, and then their navigator, the the navigator, they, they fill out the form. All the information is self-reported. So again, we're not asking for pay stubs. We're not asking to, for uh, a piece of mail saying, you know, utility bill saying that you live in Oregon and Southwest Washington. Uh, we're just uh, trusting on faith that you're telling your now, you and your navigator are telling us the right information. And uh, so then your navigator applies, uh, sends the application to 211 info. Uh, and 2 and one info processes the application and mails out the Visa gift cards. Uh, right now, just like uh, 
we are, uh, the woman from 2-in-1 Info who is managing the program is also working remotely from home. And so she's going into the office a couple of times a week in order to process applications and send them out. So whereas uh, prior to the pandemic, cards were taking about three days to get to people, now they are taking seven to 10 days. Um, some will get them sooner, some will be a little bit longer, um, but they apply through their um, cancer center. But they will get it. It's it's definitely a low barrier program as we, we share that message around the state. We don't want to make it difficult to get money uh, sooner than later to help them or financial assistance. We try um, and keep it as low barrier as possible. Yeah. The other thing is that we do not ask for receipts. You know, I we look at it as as long as you're in treatment for breast cancer, you have to get to treatment for breast cancer. So what you use our actual gift cards on doesn't matter as long as you are actually remaining in treatment for breast, can for breast cancer. And that is why uh, the application process is through the cancer center because they're the ones who are verifying, yes, this person is in treatment. So for us, that's the important piece. I know that some of our, um, our viewers tonight are, have generously donated to this program. So I, I guess I'll leave before we ask, answer questions from the community. Um, how can the community support this program? So we are doing a day of giving tomorrow in partnership with uh, Coin6, iHeart Media, and Les Schwab. And so uh, you can donate on our website at comanoregon.org. Uh, and there's also on our Facebook page, and I imagine that uh, uh, Alice can put it in the comments. Uh, you can also text to give. So we've got a number that you just text the number and it'll walk you through the process. You can do it from your smartphone. Thank you. I, th this, is a, this is a program and fund that's not unlimited. Um, we, as, as Cindy shared, we're giving out uh, way more than we typically do. Um, and we are committed to doing that as long as we have money to do that and resource um, to continue to be viable. So um, as, as Sheree uh, has attested to benefiting from this program, and others, um, we're committed to supporting this in any way we can, but obviously we need the community support and it doesn't mean any one person's gonna solve it. It's, it's all about the general community, five, 10, 20, $25. Um, I personally have received messages. I know Cindy has all of our staff. When someone wrote across an envelope saying, you helped save my life, um, which happened about three, four weeks ago um, on a survey result or in my first two weeks at Komen, um, more than five years ago, someone from Burns left me a message saying, thank you for the $200. Uh, it may not seem like a lot to you, but I'm a single mom with a 17 year old son and it really does. And so whoever gave this money to you, uh, thank you. And thank you for helping me. So I, I can't impress upon, and, and as Cindy and I have traveled the, the state, um, many, many miles over mountains and valleys and hills, um, you can truly appreciate when you're sitting in a small town in, in Eastern Oregon or Southern Oregon or in the Valley, how critical this program is and how it really touches lives like Cherie's. So uh, I, 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 Cindy, sorry. I was just gonna mention that uh, I was also looking, as I was looking through kind of use, some usage information, it struck me that uh, the people who have used this program in the last six weeks have been from all over our service area, from Southwest Washington, from uh, the furthest uh, counties in Eastern Oregon and, and Southwestern Oregon um, and Northeastern Oregon. I mean, we're getting requests from all over the place, um, which is exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see people around the state uh, utilizing the program as much as possible. Absolutely. Alice, do we have any questions from the community? I have answered this one already, but I'll say it just for the sake of reiteration. Um, we One question was, if someone doesn't have a car, will the treatment access program help patients with bus fares, Uber, et cetera? So the, yes, the, uh, so while we are not the ones who are, arranging the transportation. It's a Visa gift card. And so it can be used uh, for anything. Excellent, thank you. 
Um, the next question we had isn't necessarily TAP related, but it's still a good question from Marilyn uh, who asks, is Coleman also helping women access mammograms at this time? I imagine many women have lost their health insurance. A great question and a precursor to uh, what we're going to be talking about next Wednesday. So up, so from about mid-March until the beginning of May, uh, mammogram, uh, mammography centers were basically closed down and they are starting to open up again. And so we, I was actually on the phone just the other day with um, the uh, state's free mammogram program, ScreenWise, uh, and they are starting to see an uptick in uh, program usage. So we work with that program quite closely, uh, including advocating for um, state and federal funding of it. Um, so we do have, if people have questions about where they can go, uh, if they contact our office, uh, we would be happy to help direct them. There's also some resources on our website, comanoregon.org, and our phone number is 503-552-9160. Score! Think. <laughs> or you can call 1-800-404-8241. Thank you. <laughs> This is one of the one of the um, downfalls of working from home is not having have, the phone numbers cheat. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have another question come in that says, "Does this program depend on donations?" Absolutely. So we uh, receive a couple of uh, foundation grants for this program uh, for some of the more rural communities. Uh, but I would say, Andy, probably 80% at least of the funding for this program is from donations. Uh, as Andy mentioned, Tony Mountain earlier, uh, she uh, used, before she retired from Coleman, she was our survivor support uh, person and so survivor support manager. And uh, this program, this, so the treatment access program has been around uh, in some form of some form or another for at least 15 years. Um, and this was a passion of, was and is a passion of Tony's. And so when she retired, uh, she worked with uh, Anne uh, Berryman, our development director uh, and her team to, to, to put together the Tony Mountain Fund so that we could raise funds specifically for this program. This is absolutely community driven. This is why tomorrow's event is so important um, to fill the coffers, uh, to help us push that money out quickly into the community right now, which and, is more important than ever. Yeah, and we spend, on a, in a typical year, we spend about $100,000 on this program. Uh, and so that is why uh, our goal for tomorrow is $100,000 to fully fund the program. Um, I anticipate that we'll be spending more on it this year just because the need has been so great. Thank you. Those are all of the questions, but we did have one more comment come in. Speaking of Tony Mountain, she just wants to say congratulations, Cherie, on five years. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> we love Tony. Tony, we yes. love you. Yes. <laughs> He's amazing. Sheree, do you have anything else you want to share before we uh, sign off? You know, I, I, I thank you for giving me a chance to say that as a recipient of these funds, it was one of the greatest joys uh, in my husband and my journey to be able to get to the point where then we could become regular contributors back to the program. And, um, you know, we made a monthly commitment on this because I know, we know what this money means for us. I mean, we had a young family um, and life is difficult and these times are especially challenging. And to be able to be on the other side now, I mean, yes, I still hit you guys up once a year. <laughs> but in the meantime, I feel like it's such a great investment that uh, to be able to give once, or in my case, I, we do it monthly, is a privilege that I feel because 
I have been so generously blessed through the program and through other resources that women, I didn't even know what questions to ask. I didn't know where to turn when I needed help. And so now being on the other side of that journey and seeing the availability and the need for it, I'm just such a wholehearted believer. It's a great investment. Even if you throw your coffee money in a jar once a week and send it in, it's, it's not that difficult to do. And it really, truly makes a difference in a woman or man's life. Sheree, I look forward to the chance or the time when we can give you a hug when you're back up here in Portland. Not yes. ever. <laughs> or when we're down in Grants Pass. Yeah. Or yeah. Down Pass. <laughs> or on our road trips that Cindy and I take. And I, and I really want to thank everyone who tuned in tonight uh, for taking time with us and, and listening and, and know how important this program is in our efforts tomorrow. Um, Cindy, thank you for sh sharing um, background on the program and obviously all the work you're doing with all of our providers and, and with the patients that you and your team serve. Um, Cindy mentioned uh, next week, uh, we're gonna be joined by a guest who's gonna talk about reopening breast cancer centers for screening and di diagnostic exams during the pandemic. And our guest is uh, breast cancer radiologist, Thomas Gibson, Dr. Thomas Gibson, who's at Providence Breast, Service, Breast Services. So please do tune in. That, that, that is something that I'm sure is on one's mind um, as we're returning to some more essential or non-essential services, but important services Very important. Uh, as hospitals open up in terms of what they're providing. So uh, we will send that information out early next week, but I wanna thank you all of you again for joining us in this series at Health at Home. Uh, it has been a wonderful uh, experience to have our guests and the wonderful questions that have come through uh, from all of you who have been tuning in. So I wish you all a wonderful evening and thank you so much for your, for your care, your support and your passion uh, for the work that we do at Coma and with breast cancer. It takes a community.